Dr. Sage here, back with the third out of the fourth video on metabolism, energy, and enzymes. In this video, we're going to discuss ATP. All right, so your cell does work. The three main types of work your cell does are chemical, transport, and mechanical. And some of these are things we've already discussed in the other videos. For example, we talked about a motor protein. Okay, a motor protein does what it sounds like it does. It can move, it has motion, like the feet on this motor protein walk along this microtubule. But in order to move, it needs energy. Where does it get the energy from? It gets it from ATP or active transport. When you pump things against their electrochemical gradient, like taking sodium ions from a low concentration in the cytoplasm and pumping them to a high concentration outside the cell. That requires energy. Where does the energy come from? ATP. All right, so we're gonna learn about ATP. All I've said about ATP so far is that it's a cell's rechargeable battery. It stores energy. When you need energy, you use ATP for your source of energy. So how does that work? Well, in the cell, the energy from the exergonic reaction of ATP hydrolysis can be used to drive an endergonic reaction. Overall, the coupled reactions are exergonic. All right, let me delve into explaining what that is saying. ATP powers cellular work by coupling exergonic and endergonic reactions. To do work, cells manage energy resources by energy coupling. The use of an exergonic reaction to drive an endergonic reaction. And most energy coupling inside the cell happens by using ATP. Okay, so what is energy coupling? Well, let's say your cell has chemical A and it wants to turn that into chemical B. But let's say that reaction is an endergonic reaction. So the only way that can happen is if it takes in energy to make that happen. Okay, so it has to take in energy to turn chemical A into chemical B. But recall the energy cannot be created or destroyed. So that energy has to come from somewhere. Well, where does that energy come from? It comes from some exergonic reaction. So let's say if you take chemical C and turn that into chemical D, that's an exergonic reaction, so it's going to release energy. Well, the cell can then use that energy to turn A into B. So that's energy coupling. Coupling is when you put two things together, or putting together is where you're using an exergonic reaction to power an endergonic reaction. That's energy coupling. Now, most energy coupling that happens inside your cells is done through ATP. Okay, so what is ATP? ATP actually stands for adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so this is ATP here. ATP is adenosine, so these two together, adenine plus ribose, those are called adenosine when they're together. So that's the A in ATP. And then the TP stands for triphosphate. Tri means three, so this is telling you there's three phosphate groups here. So that's ATP. So this molecule is storing energy. It turns out there's energy stored in the bonds between these phosphate groups. So this is like a charged up battery. Now, when your cell needs energy, what it's going to do is it's going to take and break this bond between these phosphate groups. Okay, so it's going to take this bond and it's going to do hydrolysis to break this bond. So that's going to release one of these phosphates. Okay, and when it does that, it releases energy. Okay, and that's why it's doing this because it wants this energy because it wants to use this energy. So you have ATP, adenosine triphosphate. You're going to do hydrolysis to break one of the phosphates off. That then turns it into ADP. Now, think of D as standing for like the dead battery or the drain battery, if that helps you to remember it. It's not what D actually stands for. D stands for dye. It's telling you dye means two. It's telling you there's two phosphates here. So ATP to ADP is going to release energy. So you have the charged up battery, then you use that battery to release its energy. This is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And then you can break off one of these phosphates, and then that will make ADP diphosphate. And although we don't talk about it much in Bio 1, you can actually break off another phosphate, and then that would turn it into AMP, M stands for mono, which means one, monophosphate. And if you don't have any of the phosphates, remember this is called adenosine, these two together. So you have adenosine, AMP, ADP, ATP. 
okay? That's your charged up battery. That's the main thing that's used for energy coupling inside your cells. Now, ATP is not just a battery, it's a rechargeable battery. What that means is, let's say you need some energy. Well, then you can take ATP, you can turn it into ADP, the dead battery. That's going to release energy. Then you're going to use this energy for some endergonic reaction, like active transport, movement of the cell, or any anabolic reaction. Okay, so that is energy coupling. This is releasing energy that's exergonic. Okay, this is going to take in energy that's endergonic. But remember, this is not just a battery, it's a rechargeable battery. So you can take this dead battery and you can charge it back up by adding energy back to it. Now remember, energy can't be created, so it's gotta come from somewhere. Where does that energy come from? Some exergonic reaction, like aerobic cellular respiration, which we're gonna learn about in a lecture very soon. As you take glucose, break it down to carbon dioxide, it releases energy. That energy is used to charge up ATP or any catabolic reaction. Take a protein, break it down to amino acids, that's going to release energy. You could use that energy to charge up ATP. Okay, so this is ATP, your cell's rechargeable battery. This is used for energy coupling. The energy released from an exergonic reaction is used to power an endergonic reaction. Okay, or in little cheat sheet form, okay. In blue are endergonic reactions, so active transport cell movement anabolic reactions, those are endergonic. ADP to ATP is endergonic, okay? In orange, you have exergonic, okay? So cell respiration or catabolic reactions are gonna release energy, so they're exergonic. Or ATP to ADP is going to release energy, so it's exergonic. All right, so make sure you know and understand how ATP relates to energy coupling and how it relates to the terms exergonic or endergonic. And from the last lecture, also keep in mind how it's going to relate to the other terms like catabolic, anabolic, negative delta G, positive delta G. For example, ATP to ADP, that's going to be releasing energy. So you should know that that's exergonic. And recall that exergonic reactions have a negative delta G. ATP with three phosphates, so you have three phosphates you break it down into ADP and a phosphate. So since you're breaking it down, that's a catabolic reaction. You're breaking it down. Okay, ADP to ATP, you're taking two phosphates and a phosphate and sticking them back together. So you're building it up. So that's an anabolic reaction. Okay, and that's gonna take in energy to make that happen. So that's gonna be endergonic. And remember, endergonic has a positive delta G. Okay. So make sure you understand how those all relate to each other. So this has been video two out of three where we talk about cell metabolism. In the next video, the fourth video, we're going to learn about enzymes, what they are, and how they work. Until then, this has been Dr. Sage.